Let's take a look at solving problems um, using the fundamental theorem of algebra on a T84 plus calculator. And our first problem, we want to find the zeros. Okay, so we got f of x is equal to x to the third minus 3x squared minus 18x plus 40. And the instructions say to find the zeros. Well, what that means is we set this equal to zero. So we've got x to the third minus 3x squared minus 18x plus 40 equal to zero. Now, when we've got a polynomial and we're trying to find the zeros, your largest power, your degree, uh, tells you how many answers you're going to have. So our largest power is the third power. It means we're going to have three answers. Now we're going to put the polynomial on y1, and we'll put the zero on y2. So um, go to y equals and press clear if you have anything on y1 and then we got x caret 3 minus 3x and then our x squared minus 18x plus 40 and then we down arrow and we put zero on y2. Okay, so we're going to do second trace. Be sure you have zero on y2. This doesn't work if you don't have zero on y2. So second trace, and then we want to choose intersect. So I'm going to press the number set in front of it, the five. Now our answers are going to be where it crosses the x-axis. Looks like uh, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four is one answer. Two is another, and five is the third one. Um, let's go through our steps to verify that. So it says first curve. You go ahead and press enter on first curve. Then it'll come up and say second curve. You press enter on it. Now for our guess, we're going to input an x value close to where we think our answer is. We said we think it's uh, negative 4, so let's put in negative 5. And then I'll press enter. And it'll find the uh, answer that's closest to your guess. Now you don't want to go too far out because it does weird things sometimes. If I went out to negative 10 and sometimes it wraps around and finds one over here, which I don't really understand. Um, but it does that. So we get x is equal to negative 4. Well that's our first answer. We have to go through the process for each, each of our answers. So I'm going to do second trace and choose intersect. Press 5 again. Enter on first curve, enter on second curve. Now that time I input an x value close to my answer. Well I think my next answer is 2. You can put in your answer um, for your guess. So I can put in 2 if I want. And it'll come back and tell us, yeah, x is equal to 2. So for your guess, you can input an x value close to it. You can actually enter the answer. Sometimes you have to do that, which we'll talk about later. And let's look at a third way. So we'll do second trace, choose intersect. Enter our first curve, enter our second curve. Now notice my flashing cursor is on the 2. I can do my right arrow key and move the flashing cursor over to the closer to the one I'm trying to find. Uh, it doesn't have to be right on top of it, just closer to it. And then I'll press enter. And then I'll find that one. So x equals 5. That technique um, of moving arrows, if you're a visual person, you may like that better. Uh, that uh, comes in handy if you're going on trig and calculus. Now we said we're going to have three answers. We found all three with the calculator, so we don't have to do any, any extra work on that problem. Okay, let's look at our second example. We've got f of x is equal to 4x to the third minus 17x squared plus 16x minus 3. Now we want to find the zeros again, so we set it equal to 0. So we've got 4x to the third minus 17x squared plus 16x minus 3 equal to 0. And we're going to put our polynomial on y1. So put this on y1. And we'll put 0 on y2. Okay, so press my y equals. Clear to clear our words on there. And we've got 4x to the third, so 4x carrot 3, minus 17x, and then our x squared, plus 16x, 
and minus 3. And uh, you should still have 0 on y2 from the first uh, example, so you want to put that there again. Now do second trace. I'm going to choose intersect, so I'll press 5. You want to make sure you wait till it comes back before you start pressing enter. See how it's still thinking right now? Okay, and it'll come up and ask for first curve, so we'll do enter on that. Ask for second curve, so I'll do enter on that. It looks like our first answer is maybe a quarter or a third or something like that. Um, so for the guess, let me put zero in and press enter. And we get x is equal to 0.25. Now if you get decimals, uh, what you need to do is you need to exit out and then change them to fraction. So we'll do second mode to exit out. And then I'll press my X key and math, enter, enter. And that tells us our first answer is one quarter. No big surprise, you could look at 0.25 and realize it's one, uh, one quarter. But if it's a harder decimal, then maybe it's not so easy to see. So you want to get used to these uh, steps I'm showing here. Well, we've got two more answers. Uh, again, we said we're going to have three answers because the largest power is three. Uh, we have to have three numbers circled when we're done. So we'll do second trace and intersect. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, first curve, enter on first curve, enter on second curve. For the guess, I think maybe one is the next one. So do one and then enter. And it comes back and tells us x equals one. Okay, the next one, maybe four or five, so, or three maybe. So I do second, trace, and choose five for intersect. In our first curve, in our second curve, let me put three in. Looks like three. And it is three. So calculator gave us all three answers, so we don't have to do any extra work on that one. Okay, let's look at our third example. I'm going to go ahead and set this equal to zero. We know we're finding the zeros. So I got x to the fourth plus 5x to the third minus 5x squared minus 15x plus 14 equal to zero. Now our largest power is the fourth power. It means we're going to have four answers. So we should have four, four, four numbers circled when we're done, or four somethings circled. Um, so let's uh, input that into y1. That's pretty vague, wasn't it? It's four somethings. Um, we're going to see they're not always real. I'm not, I don't think we see it in this problem, but okay. So we do y equals clear and x, x of 4, so x caret 4, plus 5x of 3rd, so x caret 3, minus 5x squared. minus 15x plus 14 and you have to have 0 on y2 which we already do so do second trace choose intersect and I don't know it looks like negative uh, 1 2 3 4 negative 5.4 or something like that uh, let's see we'll do enter our first curve enter our second curve for the guess we put in negative 5 and press enter and negative 5.316625. Well, don't want eight decimals, so let's try to change that to fraction. So I'm going to exit out, do second mode, and then I'll press my X key, math, enter, enter. Okay, it doesn't change to a, um, to a fraction, so I can't use it. Well, let's continue on and see what we can find off the calculator. So we'll do second trace, choose intersect. Next one looks like negative 2. So I'll do enter, enter, and I'll put a negative 2 for the guess. And it indeed is negative 2. Well, next one maybe looks like, uh, I don't know, can't tell what's going on there. But let's put a 0 for the guess. So I'll do second trace, choose intersect, enter, enter, and 0 for the guess. And then we get x equals 1. <clears throat> Well, I think, move my cursor off, see how that graph's coming down? It's coming down a little bit below the uh, x-axis. I could zoom in if I wanted to, uh, to see it a little bit better, but I don't need to. I'm just going to put 2 in for the guess and see what comes up. So I'll do second trace, and choose intersect. 
Enter, enter, put two for the guess. 1.3166248. Well, let's try to change that to a fraction. We can't use decimals. So do second mode, and then I'll press X, and then math, enter, enter. Doesn't change, so we can't use it. Okay, so we just found two answers. Well, that's okay. Let's plug those in and see what happens. Doesn't matter which one you start with. I'll start with a negative 2. And um, remember, real small across the top here, I'm going to write uh, x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x, and no x, our constant term. Do not write those large or you will screw it up. Um, we would write down numbers that's in front of them. There's a 1 in front of the x to the fourth, in front of the x to the third is a 5, negative 5, negative 15, and 14. And we'll go through synthetic division. So we'll add, uh, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, um, add, multiply, add. Now we get a zero. That zero me means we found an answer, which is no surprise. The calculator told you it was an answer. If the calculator tells you it's an answer, you have to get a zero there. And I think what we're down to now, we started out as x to the fourth. This is one degree lower, so we're down to x to the third. And we want to plug in our other answer we found. So we'll plug in the 1. And I'm going to add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. We get another 0. Again, no surprise, calculator told us it was uh, an answer. So we have to get a 0 there. But now we're down to x squared. And once we get down to x squared, you can use various techniques for solving it. We're left with x squared plus 4x minus 7 equal to 0. Now this doesn't factor, so we have to use quadratic formula. Uh, a is the number that's in front of your x squared, which is 1. B is the number that's in front of your x, which is 4. And C is your number at the end, which is a negative 7. Quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. If you mess up on signs, it's probably a good idea for you to go through and replace all of your variables with parentheses before you plug in your numbers. Everything else remains exactly the same. I'm just replacing the variables with parentheses. Well, we said b was 4, so everywhere I have a b, I'll put in a 4. We said a was 1, so everywhere I have an a, I'll put in a 1. And we said c was negative 7, so everywhere we have a c, we'll put in a negative 7. Well, that gives us a negative 4, plus or minus. Square root, 4 squared is 16. Um, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, times a negative 7 gives us a positive 28. All over 2. Which gives us negative 4, plus or minus. 16 plus 28 is 44. Over 2. If I did the prime factorization of 44, it would be 2 times 2 times 11, all over 2. Remember the square root, we're looking for a pair of something. So here's a pair of 2's. A pair of 2's is going to come out in front as a single 2. And we're left with 11 inside, over 2. Now remember the quadratic formula should be called the three number rule. If you can divide this number, this number, and this number by the same number, do so. Well, those are all divisible by 2. So that's going to give us negative 2 plus or minus 1 square root 11 over 1, or just simply negative 2 plus or minus square root 11. Now up above, we circled these two. Those are our first two answers. We said we're going to have four answers. Down here, this plus or minus accounts for the other two answers, because we have negative 2 plus square root 11 and negative 2 minus square root 11. Um, the reason why they were would not change the fraction is because they were not fraction answers. They were radical answers. But anyway, that gives us our four answers. Let's look at our last example. I think I have room here. Uh, x to the fourth minus 6x to the third plus 30x minus 25 equal to 0 and again we're going to go put that on our y1 
So I'll press my y equals clear. I got x caret four for x to the fourth. <clears throat> minus six x to the third, so minus six x caret three plus thirty x minus twenty five. And you should already have zero on y two. So that's that's um there. Now we're gonna have to find four answers because remember your largest power tells you how many answers you're gonna have. Let's see what the calculator gives us. We'll do second trace, choose intersect, so I'll press five. Looks like um I don't know, negative two point something, negative two point two. We do enter our first curve, enter our second curve, and let me put in guess of negative two. Now that looks like a, a decimal, it won't change to a fraction, but let's try. You never know until you try. So I'll do second mode, and I'll press my X key, math, enter, enter. Doesn't change. Can't use that one. Okay. Now right, let's do second trace. Choose intersect. Looks like one. So enter our first curve, enter our second curve, let me put in one for the guess. And it comes back and tells us uh, it is X equals one. Okay, next one looks like 1.2 or something like that. So, second trace, choose intersect, enter our first curve, enter our second curve, and uh, let me put in 2 for the guess. 2. Point, uh, boy, I was really off. 2.236068. Well, let's try to change that to a fraction. So, we'll do second mode to exit out, and press our X key, math, enter, enter. It doesn't change. No surprise. Uh, if you get one decimal that will not change to a fraction, you will have another one that will not change to a fraction. They come in pairs. Always. Okay, then we do second trace. We want to choose intersect. And this one maybe is five or six. So we do enter our first curve, enter our second curve, and I'll put six in for the guess. And it comes back and tells us x equals five. Been nice if we got all of our answers, but we uh, take what we get. Um, so we'll start with our first one, x equals 1. We'll plug it into synthetic division. Real small across the top, I start with my largest power, which is x to the fourth. Then we'll have an x to the third. We'll have an x squared. We'll have an x. And we'll have a no x. Do not write those large, or you'll probably mess it up. You just write those really small across the top. Those make sure it's always in standard form. You're not missing any powers. Numbers in front of x to the fourth is a 1. In front of x to the third is a negative 6. There is no x squared, so that's a 0. 30 before x, and our no x, our constant term is negative 25. Okay, so we're going to add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. We get a zero. Again, no surprise at all. Calculator told us is an answer. We better get a zero. Now we're, we started with x to the fourth. We're now down one power, so we're down x to the third. And we're going to plug in our second answer the calculator gave us, which was 5. And then we're going to add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. And we get another 0, which is, again, no surprise. Calculator told us is an answer. And now we're down to x squared. So that's x squared. This will be x, and this will be our no x, our constant term. So we're left with x squared minus 5 equal to 0. This always works out nice when our mid middle term is missing. We can take the negative 5 to the right side, and it becomes a positive 5. And we'll use the square root property. The square root property says if you got something squared equal to something else, you drop your squared, and you put a plus or minus square root around the other side. So the calculator gave us two answers, and we just found uh, two more. Uh, this, that's what this plus or minus accounts for. Now, I haven't given you a complete lecture here. I wanted to show you enough of the calculator so that you feel comfortable with finding your initial answers via the calculator. But uh, there's one example I didn't give you. Let's say here's x equals 2. And your graph's coming down like this right here. Now, for your guess, some people love using the arrow keys to move their uh, cursor over closer to what they're trying to find and then pressing enter. The one time that does not work work well is when you got a graph that comes down, touches at a point, and goes back up, or it comes up and touches a point, and goes back down. If it's touching at a point, to get the answer, you have to actually input uh, the answer for the guess. That sounds kind of weird, but if we're to get to come back and tell me one of my answers is two, 
I had to put in two for the guess. Now that's the only time when you can't use that arrow key method for uh, for figuring out or doing your guess. That was um, finding zeros um, on T84 plus uh, calculator.